Hey guys, this is Jeff Slavatsky, and I want to thank Jeremy for inviting me to share a little bit of my thoughts of what's changed from 2010 to 2020. Man, can you believe it? It's been uh, a decade, and has it been a decade? Has it been a year? Uh, so much has changed, and uh, it's it's hard for me to look you know, what the next 10 years will bring when frankly we're living in what I feel is 10 minute increments. But uh, I'm excited, I'm optimistic. Uh, 2010, I think back to 2010 and so much was different. Just in the community here in Omaha, uh, Dusty Davidson and I, my business partner and I had recently launched an event called Big Omaha. We were bringing tech founders in from both coasts that were meeting with our community here in Omaha at Coneco right down the street from the university uh, and building community and community during 2010 looked different than what it does during 2020 specifically. You know, frankly, there was no social distancing uh, and it was just, it was, you know, several hundred people in a room, but this idea of saying, Hey, I'm not alone. Uh, I can push things forward. I can create new ideas. Uh, I can create companies right here in Omaha, Nebraska. So uh, to some extent, that hasn't changed, right? You fast forward to 2020, Flywheel, which is Dusty Davidson's uh, company, you know, he had since grown that to several hundred employees, was acquired by an Austin-based company, WP Engine, last year. Uh, and they continue to grow. They continue to scale, continue to operate, right? And that was started right here in Omaha, Nebraska, uh, with another couple individuals, Rick Knutson and Tony Necker. So, uh, it can be done, right? Things are different in 2020. Uh, we haven't seen people uh, together in the same room for quite some time. Um, but rest assured, you know, uh, community is still alive and community still can thrive, even though it looks different. Uh, so kudos to you for continuing to push your idea forward, for continuing to reach out to people to help support your idea uh, and ask for help. Uh, some of those things that haven't changed in quite some time. Uh, as I was looking back uh, at the Hot 100 Billboard list for 2010, the number one song was Kesha, TikTok. Who would have thought Kesha's TikTok would then turn into an app less than 10 years later? Uh, I use that jokingly, but serious, right? iPhone it was out for three years in 2010. Now we're getting ready to release the iPhone 12, believe it or not. Uh, there's so many apps, so many social networks, so many social platforms that have been created since 2010. Uh, most for good, but I'd say also uh, a lot of them are getting um, likely good critique and good pushback for the ways in which they're used, right? Um, I often said that uh, we have to figure out how to master the tools rather than have the tools master us. Uh, and I think we're seeing that in 2020, right? The divisiveness. Um, just just the rhetoric and the dividedness and frankly the hatred that's being spread uh, using these tools uh, that we call social media. Um, again, I, I, I feel personally, you know, as we look forward over the next uh, several months um, and years and beyond, uh, as a society, we really need to just push pause and think about how we're utilizing technology and if it's truly bringing us together or if it's separating and dividing us. Um, we're in the heart of an election year, an election season. Uh, and I know personally that I've had many times to just push pause on checking my social media accounts, right? Because I find myself just in areas, in ways um, that I don't wanna be, that I know I'm not as an individual. And so, you know, in light of um, coupling COVID-19 and social distancing requirements um, and, you know, separating us from our true friends and true community. Uh, it's hard. You, you hop online, you hop on social media and you think um, the world is going to explode. And, and frankly, some days it feels like that. But, um, you know, I, I try to find that balance and that peace and that deep breath uh, that you need to take every now and then and frankly, get outside and enjoy the nice weather while we still have it here in Omaha. Uh, for a, at least a couple more weeks to hopefully months, fingers crossed, it'll last. But uh, um, yeah, I, I think, you know, again, uh, the message still holds true for me from 2010. Um, and what I always told my friends and peers and youth was to hold on to this idea that you can create a good company, a good idea, a new product, uh, a new blog, a new podcast. You can create that from anywhere. 
Uh, you don't have to be in San Francisco. You don't have to be in New York. You don't have to be in Chicago or London uh, or any other city. Um, but really, you can do that. You can do that from anywhere. You can do that from your home, your home office, in, you know, in Omaha. And so, uh, again, in light of everything going on, I encourage you to really focus on uh, what, you, what you hold important, what you hold valuable, um, and what you're an expert on, right? And you don't have to publish a book or a podcast or, you know, 15,000 videos until you're an expert, right? A lot of it is just creating uh, consistent content. Um, that's one of the things I know looking back with Silicon Prairie News, you know, really what we did is we just got in front of folks' face with a flip video camera. I know Jeremy will remember uh, what those flip video cameras were like. Uh, those were pre-iPhone days. Um, but really we just say, hey, tell me about what you do, right? Rachel Jacobson from Film Streams. Tell me about how you started Film Streams, the only independent film studio in Omaha, Nebraska. You know, Dave Nelson from Secret Penguin. Hey Dave, tell me how you started Secret Penguin and transitioned from being a professional skateboarder to a professional designer and uh, website designer. Um, you know, Dusty Davidson, tell me about Flywheel, tell me about Triple Seed, tell me about Bright Mix, right? Tell me about how you started these companies that started up here and you pushed them forward to a concept and an idea. So again, don't lose that, don't lose that. Just in, in light of everything we're wrestling with and going through right now is um, a community, a city, a state, a country, a world, uh, don't lose that hope, right? Don't lose that ability to push forward concept and ideas and then find others like yourself too. And they're out there. I guarantee you they're out there. So use those tools, use that social media that I spoke about, use it for good, right? Find somebody else that's interested in Kesha. Find somebody else that's interested in social justice, right? Find somebody else that's interested in uh, website design or foosball or football, whatever that may be, right? Um, create that content, find your peers, find your tribe, stick together, push things forward. Um, and, and again, all community, frankly, is local, right? So it's this idea of saying, how do you find folks in your own backyard that can help you push forward your idea and your concept? But if you can't find them for whatever reason, look in the Midwest, right? Look outside the city, look outside the state, look outside the region, look to the coast, right? Look globally as well. Again, we're all sitting at home these days or from our remote offices, remote you know, learning spots, um, but you have the ability to reach out and engage uh, and, and really, frankly, communicate and push anything forward that you choose to. So again, it's one of those things day by day, right? But in that day by day journey and process that we're all in right now, I would encourage you to grasp on that idea that excites you, that drives you, that motivates you to push things forward and again, start churning out the content, start blogging, start writing, start journaling, start taking the video series, right? As small as it may be, you know, go outside and take the photographs and publish them to the web, right? And do it for yourself. Don't do it for other people. Don't do it for how many likes you're going to get. Uh, do it because you're good at it. Do it because you love it. Do it because you want to share that love with other people that may stumble across what you're creating. So yeah, that's, that's my thoughts. Looking back 2020, to 2010, but also now looking forward 2020 to 2030. Goodness gracious, man, I don't know. Who knows what 2030 will bring? We're probably gonna vote for a uh, president from Mars, I think is what it's gonna end up being if, uh, if the rest of this year kind of continues on the same pace. Elon Musk is gonna shuttle us all to Mars. Uh, there will be no more apps or social media. Kesha will uh, reemerge with her second album, probably around 2028, 2029. Uh, and then 2030, we're just gonna have a grand old party uh, up, on, uh, up on Mars. No, but for real, um, you know, again, I, I think people like you um, that are vested in changing the community, changing society, changing cities, um, there are hope. And I don't mean that cliche and I don't mean that uh, loosely, right? Um, it's, it's dependent upon you even more so to really, you know, craft and shape and mold the city, the community, the state, the world that you want to live in. And you don't do that by sitting on the sidelines. You don't do that by sitting, you know, idle and, and waiting for somebody else to take the mantle, if you will. Um, a mentor of mine told me a line that I repeat over and over several times, frankly, on a weekly basis. Um, the, he, he told me one time and I said, man, what if? What if we try to get this speaker for Big Omaha and they say no, right? And he, he looked at me in the eyes and he said, the answer is always no, unless you ask. 
The answer is always no, unless you ask, right? And if you think about that, it's so profound, it's so prolific. It, frankly, it, it can be applied to anything in life, right? Uh, will I get turned down? Will I make the team? Will I not make the team? Will I get the job, right? Will I be able to go out on the date, whatever it may be? Well, if you, if you never ask, the answer is always no. And so I encourage you to wrestle with that uh, and make sure that uh, you, know, you put things into process and into practice and, uh, and, and think of one small thing that you can do each day to push your goal or your concept or your idea along and make it happen. It's not that hard. Uh, it's a lot harder uh, you know, to listen to the naysayers and kind of be able to push back and say, no, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna push forward and I'm gonna make it happen. So um, again, I'm grateful and excited and thankful that uh, Dr. Olivia Schultz, Jeremy had invited me to share kind of things that, uh, that I've seen that have changed from 2020, uh, 2010 to 2020. And hopefully I give you a little bit of look into the future. I don't know how accurate it will be, but uh, again, it's something just to wrestle with and ponder and uh, uh, keep up the great work. And uh, I encourage you to reach out to me. I'm always willing to help, always willing to uh, provide a listening ear, connect dots, whatever it may be, to just help you push your idea and project forward. So um, yeah, with that, just keep up the great work, keep up the amazing effort and the attitude and the energy that you have. The youth are the future, you are the future. Uh, and I'm excited to hopefully see what some of you guys create over the months and weeks and years and decades to come. Thanks guys.